Uh, my name is David Sharon. Welcome to the Intel Technology to Market Accelerator Program, Lecture 5 on Customer Relationships, How to Get, Keep, and Grow Your Customers. Our focus is on the Customer Relationship box of the Business Model Canvas. Now we're going to talk about two different forms of Get, Keep, Grow today. We're going to look at the web side, and we're also going to look at uh, the physical product uh, side of the world and ask the question of what's different? How does a physical products company acquire its customers? How do they keep their customers and grow their customers? And how does a web or mobile product do that also? Obviously, these things are different, and let's go into this. So today we're going to do Get, Keep, Grow. We're going to have a particular focus on customer acquisition cost and customer lifetime value, the two components that really tell you whether you've got a sustainable business or not based upon the revenues that you're going to generate from your customers. First, let's look at get. In the physical product world, uh, you can see the funnel here starts with awareness. This is the uh, customers who become aware of your product uh, through your marketing activities. And through that awareness, they're going to develop, some of them are going to develop an interest in your product based upon who they are and the match to the marketing product, uh, marketing materials that you have. Once they generate interest, your job then is to get them to consider the purchase of the product. And that consideration comes in many different forms. But in general, what they're going to do is transfer pretty quickly once they get the interest to looking at what is this product and what is it going to do for me? And once they get to the consideration, hopefully your conversion rates are good enough that you're going to get a high purchase rate. Now what's interesting in the physical product side is that you can set up a small viral loop between the purchase and awareness of your future customers. Um, <clears throat> and a great example of this is the iPhone when it first came out. Is that uh, that physical product when people bought it went into the hands of the users and the people around the iPhone owners actually noticed the phone. That awareness that was generated by the use of the iPhone is a small viral loop and it helps build awareness in the other customers and it may actually generate some interest if there is further communication between the user and the potential buyer. One of the key considerations here is who is your archetype? That initial customer for the startup, how do you describe them? Who are they and how do you create marketing that sings to them, that tells them exactly why they want to buy your product. So this is a great example of a customer archetype. Uh, let's call him Brian. He's a lab manager. We understand his role. We understand who they are. We understand their demographics. <clears throat> we understand how they buy. They might have a discretionary budget or they might need to get some uh, approval to spend that money. We understand what matters to them and what motivates them in the purchasing process. And we understand who the influencers are, who do they listen to when they're thinking about buying a product that might be a high-priced product. Once you get that archetype figured out, then it's going to be easier to get your awareness um, up and formalized because you'll be able to speak directly to these archetypes. Now there are two ways to get awareness. One is to pay for demand creation activities. So paid media uh, is the right way to think about this. So you can hire a public relations firm that will put press releases out. Uh, you can buy advertising online. You can go to trade shows and pick up a booth somewhere. And you can do any number of things, but you're going to end up paying for that. You actually have to spend money to get that demand creation going. And other ways, uh, they're free. So this is earned media. And you can write papers uh, that will be published in journals. Uh, you can be invited to give a speech at a conference, or you might uh, blog or create some content online that makes you appear and your company appear like you're an expert in this field and that people ought to be listening to what you're saying. All of those activities don't require cash. They might require your time, but in general, you're not going to have to pay for that. That's why we call it free demand creation. 
So once we get the customers, we have to figure out how much it costs to get those customers. That's called the customer acquisition cost. And this is really a critical point for you to understand. And the way to figure that um, is very specific. So let's, let's take an example here. Uh, this is uh, customer acquisition cost versus sales complexity. And sales complexity kind of goes, uh, increases to the right here. Uh, if it's a freemium product, starting over on the left, your customer acquisition cost might be zero. You might just put that up on the, on the web and people self-serve. They download the product and acquire the product when they want to. Uh, so it might be fairly cheap or you might have some small paid advertising that goes with that. So another way is to think about no-touch self-service. So you, now you have a self-service model, might be in a physical product, and your customer acquisition cost is starting to go up. And as we proceed across here from no touch to light touch inside sales, where you've got an inside salesperson who answers the phone, answers some questions, the cost, cost of customer acquisition is actually increasing as we go across uh, this chart. Field sales, and obviously field sales with uh, sales engineers supporting those field sales people, um, increases the customer acquisition cost uh, tremendously. Once you get your customer, you have to keep them. Now, there's a couple of key points here. If you have a product that's a one-time asset sale, it's going to be consumed, and the customer is going to move on, and they're done with your product. You don't have to worry so much about keeping your customer. You just want to have customer satisfaction after the use. That's not the case in many products. Many products, you're going to want to have an ongoing relationship with the customer. And you're going to do that through making sure that you're surveying the customer to understand their satisfaction levels. You're going to create loyalty programs. And you might even call them every now and then to check in and make sure that they're doing OK. The key number here is churn. Churn is the number of customers that you lose over a period of time. And that's typically over a month. And you might lose maybe 1% of your customers over a period of a month. And let me tell you exactly what's going on here. Is that if you're trying to just break even, keep the number of customers uh, the same month to month, you have to replace every customer that you churn. So as your churn rate goes up, you actually have to increase your efforts to get more customers to replace the customers who have left. This is really a critical point. Is this part tends to be left behind for most startups. They're more concerned on the get side of the funnel and not so much on the keep side of the funnel. It is always cheaper to keep a customer than to acquire a replacement customer for that um, particular customer that you've lost. So once you've kept that customer, then you can think about growing them. And you know, you, there are many, many different ways to do uh, a growth uh, mechanism here. Um, you might cross-sell to a different product or a different set of products or a complementary product provided by another customer. You might upsell, meaning give them more features or more functions uh, that are going to cost more money. You might unbundle pieces of the product and have them buy different pieces. Um, and you might also Grow your customer by having them help refer other customers to you. And this is a big part of the viral loop here in the physical products domain. This means that a customer is telling you, hey, my buddy down the street at the same company needs this product. And that's going directly to your sales organization. That referral is like money in the bank to you. It gives you an opportunity to go sell to somebody who's a qualified lead and you have the opportunity to not spend marketing on that awareness. Um, that person who gave you the referral will probably help you get the awareness in that customer. That's a huge deal. So growing your customers after you've kept them is really a critical piece of this. Now we get to the other side. So we talked about customer acquisition cost. Let's go in and talk about customer lifetime value. Customer lifetime value is a measure of how much money you're going to make from a customer, how much value they're going to provide to you. 
So this goes all the way through their purchase, their initial purchase, through the keep phase, whether they're paying a monthly um, installment fee or a monthly subscription fee, to any upsells or cross-sells over time. And obviously this customer might have a lot of value over a longer period of time. And we'll get to the lifetime value equation in just a minute. But this is really a critical piece. There are companies out there that are not calculating lifetime value today. They're going out and acquiring customers in sort of a land grab mechanism. Well, that's pretty hard to do in physical products. Physical products have costs associated with them. You really have to be careful to understand lifetime value and are you going to get enough money, enough revenue from a customer to support the business and sustain the business. You don't have to do it completely at the start, but you have to understand what the balance is between the customer acquisition costs and the customer lifetime value and where that's going to impact the revenue require or the resource requirements from your funding and your financial sources. So in the web mobile product is a little simpler in some respects. The get side is acquire through all your earned and paid media activities and then activate them. Okay, activating means, what, what does that mean? That means that you're, they're actually going to use what, you're, what you've put out there on your website or your mobile download. So you acquire them and this happens quite a bit. Uh, people download the app. They look at it on their phone. They actually say, oh, I'll try that some other day. And it just disappears. It never gets activated. So people, will, companies will use that download number as a vanity metric. They'll say, well, we've gotten so many downloads. But you know what? That doesn't count. What counts is when you, that customer actually uses the product and they've activated um, the, uh, the actual use of the product. The way you measure this um, in terms of the paid media side is CPM, which is the cost per thousand hits. Uh, so this is a, an um, advertising term. If you're going to go out and buy advertising on the open market, you're going to pay a CPM rate. And there are many other terms here. CPA is one of them, which is cost per action. And there's another one called cost per click. Um, and all along here, you get types of people, types of customers. This is an example for a software as a service product, right? You get a registered visitor on your website. You understand a little bit about them through the information that they've given to you. You hand that off to an inside salesperson who calls. And maybe uh, at some point in time, you get a closed deal. And there's a percentage. A certain number of customers get acquired, register. A certain number of customers in that group qualify. A certain number of the qualified leads go to inside sales and a certain number of them actually close deals. That's your yield. So if you have 100 customers at the front of the funnel, what's the yield at the back of the funnel? How much does that cost to close one deal? Because you're spending all the money across all of those potential customers, but only one of them is actually going to close. In that situation, you really want to be more targeted. So a qualified lead really is a qualified lead, and you're not spending your inside sales money on unqualified leads. How do you keep customers in the web mobile products arena? You do lots of things. One is you have to keep their attention. So you're constantly blogging, you're sending them information, you're sending them updates, you hold contests, and again you build loyalty programs into this so that you can recognize your customers over time and through their use um, they gain loyalty with you. An example of a marketing funnel is this. So here's a quick calculation. So 50% of the amount of traffic that is organic versus paid um, comes into the system. So we're paying $1.50 per paid visitor. That means we're getting a 75 cent cost per visitor, both paid and unpaid, with 3% of the visitors converting to raw leads and 20% of the raw leads that are turning into qualified leads. You see where this is going. Right? So one qualified lead requires five raw leads, 
which requires 167 visitors, which adds up to a total cost of $125 per qualified lead. That's the type of calculation you have to go through to understand the customer acquisition cost. So in this situation where you have a cost of qualified lead of about $125, then leads to a closed deal. Um, you have to have 10 leads per closed deal. So your marketing cost per closed deal is $1,250. That is very important to understand in terms of the pricing of your product. Obviously, if it's a $10 product, that's not going to work. So you have to be able to match the lifetime value to this customer acquisition cost. So we can compute uh, customer acquisition cost and lifetime value. So the lead gen cost per deal we know are $1,250. The selling cost, which excludes the management of sales. So this is actually just the cost, the raw cost of the deal is $1,620. So the total customer acquisition costs are $2,870. But what's great about this is the lifetime value is $16,000. So they're willing to spend $2,800 to get this customer. So total lifetime value is calculated by dividing the average monthly gross profit per customer, the ARPU, times your gross margin by the churn rate. Okay? You calculate it by dividing the average monthly gross profit per customer by the churn rate. The churn rate is, uh, if it's per month, it's your monthly churn rate. So balancing uh, customer acquisition cost and lifetime value in a software as a service model, you'd like to have customer acquisition cost be less, or actually lifetime value be more than three times the customer acquisition cost. Um, in months, uh, this is a uh, return to capital. Uh, months to recover the customer acquisition cost would ideally be less than 12 months. You want that payback period to be less than one year. And investors are right there with you in this. And they're looking at the customer acquisition cost and lifetime value and they want a balanced business model. They're going to ask you the questions up front to understand whether you understand the models. And the balancing act here is lowering your customer acquisition cost and hopefully raising the lifetime value over time. And both of these are multi-dimensional. You have viral effects that really help bring down the customer acquisition cost. Um, there are things that drive customer acquisition cost up by you know, providing further sales support. Um, but there are other ways to balance that with the lifetime value with the customer. Um, you can provide scalable pricing, which means that as the customer grows, uh, the pricing might grow with them. Uh, and you can do product line expansion and extensions. Um, high churn rates are the killers here. Low customer satisfaction is what drives churn rate. You have to keep your customer satisfaction up. And cost side, field sales, outbound marketing, anything that you have to produce and give to your customer is going to increase the cost to acquire that customer. Okay, so how do you keep customers web mobile? I do largely the same thing. You do loyalty programs, etc. So how does churn rate affect lifetime value? So average customer lifetime value in months is one over the monthly churn rate. I'm going to stop for a second and just re-emphasize that. The average customer lifetime in months. So instead of a customer being with you for eternity, you divide the customer um, uh, month. <laughs> you divide the customer lifetime. One over the monthly churn gives you the average customer lifetime in months. You can change the units, obviously, to years if you want. And... If the churn rate is at 1%, uh, the customer lifetime is at 100 months. At 2%, it's down to 50 months. And at 20, at 5%, it's down to 20 months. So you can see that on a monthly basis, changing your churn rate just a little bit hugely impacts the lifetime of the customer.
and lifetime value uh, diminishes at the same rate. So lower, uh, lowering churn uh, speeds up uh, your profitability. So this is just a simple chart showing net profit over time. And the olive line uh, is the line where the churn is at 1.25% and the, the teal line is at 2.5%. So you're really delaying profitability by quite a bit uh, when your churn rate is up. And obviously that same effect is there for the cumulative net profit. So 1% to 2.5% churn per month is acceptable. Um, some people would say, no, you got to get it better than that. 1% churn per month is a 12% churn per year. Higher than that, you're just filling a leaky bucket, meaning the more customers you put in, they're all falling out the bottom of the bucket. This is not a happy thing. Your salespeople will know that. Your management will know that. Everyone in the company will know it. And it will, it will damage your company significantly. Okay, we've got the get side done. Now we do the grow. So how do you grow web mobile customers? The biggest piece here is the same, it looks the same. It's upsell, next sell, cross sell, and then referrals. Uh, and getting the viral loop really working for you. Okay. And um, you can do that any number of ways. Uh, but oftentimes the referral is uh, you can give somebody a benefit if they provide a referral to you or if they send the product on, if it's a freemium model and they can refer somebody to download it. That's all part of your viral loop. So let's do an example. Here's a company called AG Robot. This is their demand generation plan. Let me just describe what a demand generation plan is. When you develop your first product and you put it out on the web or you put it on the shelf, the question is, what are you doing to get customers to buy your product? You have to do something. In this circumstance, they have many different ways to do it, right? Word of mouth generation. This is basically two systems for demo day events. They'll constantly go around and do demo day events and they've built two entire systems for this. They do two systems for customer demos, which means that two systems are out running uh, at customer demos continuously or as much as they can. And they cost about $30,000 each. So it's $120,000 to generate word of mouth, basically get in the, in the field and show people what's going on. They're gonna buy a booth at the World Ag Expo, $15,000. And they're going to do a magazine campaign. Um, two $10,000 um, placements plus an ad agency uh, equals $30,000. And so the totals up to $165,000 in their first year just to do demand generation, just to get people aware of the product and considering the purchase of the product. Let's go back to lifetime value. So this is the actual calculation that you're going to go through for a customer lifetime value. You look at the contribution margin per customer. So it's revenue over time minus the total variable costs over time divided by the average number of customers served in that unit of time. Okay, We know the lifetime of a customer is one over the churn rate. So the lifetime value is equal to the contribution per customer in that unit of time over the churn rate. I know this might sound counterintuitive and just in the way this is put together, but I think if you work through the numbers, you will understand how this works. Customer acquisition cost, total sales and marketing expense, over a unit of time. And you know, for a startup, you're gonna look at you know, maybe a month, maybe a quarter, maybe a year if you've been in operations for a while. You subtract out of that any retention costs, right? So this is only the upfront side. It is not the get, it's not the keep side. Retention costs are the cost of keeping the customer. And you divide that total sales and marketing expense by the total number of new customers acquired in that same time frame. Very simple. So let's look at a medical device company and their customer relationships. What they've done, this is a company called MAM Optics, and all of these examples come from the NSF I-Core program. 
they're looking at market adoption. How, how do they get the market to adopt their product? They have to work with any number, six different organizations, six different activities that they have to have in order to get market adoption. They have to do key opinion leaders. They have to get those people speaking about the product, believing in the product. They have to get publications in medical journals. They have to put the information into continuing medical education so that the people who are going back to get tuned up on, what, on their knowledge base will see the product and understand what it does. They have to go to conferences. They have to go to the advocacy groups. Um, and then they have to go to the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. And they have to go there because that's the stamp of approval. If they get the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists to approve the product, say something good about it, their entire population of doctors will pay attention to that. And that's going to build awareness for man optics. So what do they do? Um, they strongly influence doctors via uh, the American College Standard of Care, uh, which is influenced by the um, key uh, knowledge, uh, uh, key uh, leaders in the field, and um, they uh, relate to the key opinion leaders. Relate to the researchers. Um, the medical journals choose the key opinion leaders as principal investigators, so the journals are all on board. And you know, just going around um, the horn here, basically they said that this whole thing is a big network that we have to work with. And so when they did their customer acquisition costs, they're looking at a whole range of activities inside the company. They have a sales group. They're giving them bonuses. They're paying their expenses. They have a marketer uh, and somebody to coordinate the market, marketing and the conferences. Uh, they are building devices uh, and putting those out in the field. So the customer acquisition cost is $4,500 per customer. Uh, and that's based upon this 200 sales per year um, at a $25,000, uh, giving a profit of $3.2 million. And then the cost of goods sold is $4,200. And here's another example in a housing application. Um, to test, and that here's what they're doing, is they tested the willingness to pay. This is the lifetime value side. They used three ad identical ads with three different landing pages. Now, this is a great test. So what they can do is put this up online, and randomly, they'll, they'll produce a, a web page that has different um, things on it, different pricing on it, right? There's a free version. There's a dollar a month per household. And there's a dollar a month per user. And they were testing their pricing out. Now, that might not be broad enough. Maybe they should be doing tests at $10 a month. But at least they're narrowing it down. They're figuring out that maybe the customers like to pay per month and per user. And they used different, they used three identical ads with three different landing pages. Right? The free dollar per household. And then they, they added up the number of clicks that they got from the ads. But obviously, you see from this, they really needed to have a lot more users to get valuable data. And that's OK. That's just starting. And they know how they, they know an archetype when they see one. Uh, they've got one built up and what matters to Sarah, who influences them. And that, that's just a nuanced view of getting the pricing right on your product. Here's another example of customer relationships with online dating. This is a test that they did with a landing page and a web app. And uh, they tried a, a web-based beta uh, to register and figure out who was going to sign up. And what they found was that the Facebook referral traffic was great. Right? Sync Our Lives was OK. Direct advertising was OK. Um, t.co and through a referral was nah, not so good. All right, so if you're looking at this and saying average time on site, well, that starts to turn the tables a little bit, doesn't it? Um, and if you look at this from an overall sign up progress, they had 1,258 page views, 136 sign ups. So they have a real conversion rate here 10% conversion. That's actually pretty good for a web application. 
and 31 of those signups filled a five minute survey. So again, they're getting numbers and they connect that back to how they get their traffic. And so in this demand generation uh, test, uh, they knew women in relationships are likelier, likelier to click through. They tested for $30 Facebook click through and conversion from Facebook impressions across four different ads. Um, and they found a lot of great information through this. And their funnel came together. So they spent $29 this week. They got 304,000 impressions. They got 122 uniques, 85 new. Um, they got 30 signups and basically they knew that they were paying 99 cents for each signup. That's amazing, 24.6% conversion, but only one used the web app. Okay, and we can go on and we can do more examples. Online sales, uh, this is their web funnel of how they build this. Uh, there's a referral to the website. They fill out a savings calculator. This is a uh, financial services site. They send that request to sales. They reconnect to the, with a very viable customer. They visit the site again and finally close the sale. Mobile apps, um, success depends on virality and churn in all mobile apps, very crowded marketplace. Um, the user growth in each market so users per market on the, on the y-axis on the left, total revenues on the right. Uh, and what they're seeing is that uh, Jakarta, okay, Southeast Asia is okay. The rest of Asia, Asia is huge. And the rest of the world is doing pretty well too. And, and that gives them a total demand curve, um, which is the thick blue line. So the ratio, what they're trying to do is figure out here is that virality is greater than churn, which means that you're getting more users from the viral activities than your churn. And in this situation, virality is two times churn, and that is fantastic. It's a great result. As um, that ratio goes down, the sales go down and go down even further if it's equal to the churn rate, because then it's you have to pay them get paid media to generate all your new sales. And demand creation, um, the uh, process that they went through was testing a number of different uh, activities. And demand creation via the website results, uh, they got a certain number of clicks. The click-through rate CTR was uh, with number one, 0.59, number three is 1.56%, which is great. Cost per click, we'll put that in, 0.62 uh, cents, or uh, uh, my guess is that cents, but I don't know if that's dollars or cents. And the conversions per click, 4.05% uh, for number three. So we know that number three is actually going to do great compared to a number one, number two. Um, this is just a, a statement here that came from the group saying people need to use the product for us to maximize the learning, meaning the front end is great. But really what they want to see is people using the product. Again, software reference tool. Uh, they did AdWords testing. Uh, they went in to see what was uh, generating clicks, generating results. They did A-B testing on those AdWords and uh, determined which campaigns were working and determined their viral rate. Uh, they understand that they're a little viral, um, which is kind of like saying, not very good, right? 12% of signups from referrals. Um, 14 of 117 new registrations came from referrals by three people. It's just incredible. So what you're seeing here in this situation is uh, the benefits of putting in a referral bonus. Is that somebody who goes through the system and understands that they can get bonused by giving more referrals is going to do exactly that. They're going to give more referrals. And collaboration doesn't pop yet um, because they need to have more users in the system, uh, but they can test it as they go. Uh, and the experimentation is actually fairly cheap. Uh, here's another example of um, search keywords and how this looks uh, when you pull it off of Google. Windows Cloud, Cloud Computing Trends, 
it's eligible, there's a price associated with it, and there's some statistics that you can uh, look at here for AdWords. Highly competitive AdWords are going to be much more expensive. Again, it's paid advertising, and it's just not going to be efficient with the highly competitive AdWords. So you can build mechanisms to buy smaller, lesser expensive AdWords and build content around those so that you're getting customers um, specifically uh, for your circumstance. You, everything will work um, in tight sync. Here's a medical device. The channel incentive is built in here, which is quite interesting. So we have hospitals and pain clinics. Um, hospitals uh, refer to outpatient care and home settings. Um, and there's a per-service revenue model for private hospitals and specialty clinics that they might go to um, that are providing high-value therapies. Um, inpatient care through the pain clinics uh, generates a per diem in the revenue model. And, you know, they're looking at the pharmacoeconomics. They're worried about the outcomes and whether they're actually doing well um, on the economic side of the, the pharmacy. And their demand creation... They created a budget of $300,000 per year uh, that was going to be spent on one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings, so a fair amount of travel for the CEO, uh, the initial salesperson, uh, conferences and society uh, visits uh, and fees, patients' advocacy groups going to them, and all the way around to doing free uh, research journal publications. So that's it for today. Um, we covered a lot in this particular uh, presentation. Uh, and I just want to thanks, thank you uh, for listening and uh, hope you do well. Keep your customer relationships tight. Thank you. Bye-bye.